to Monday here at Stuff and Things. First up, we will talk about bone tumors in Neanderthals. And we'll look at a new strategy for helping out our friendly bees. And finally, cloaking information in fiber optic data streams. Dun dun dun! A 12,000 year old Neanderthal rib bone is found to have a tumor in it. This is the oldest tumor we found in a bone, any kind of bone ever. The oldest is like 1,000 to 4,000 years. 12,000 Neanderthals. And what's really interesting about this is that it's a primary bone uh, tumor in the rib again. So this is rare among humans. So this, to find it in a skeleton is just amazing. Scientists were able to ID the tumor as a fibrous dysplastic neoplasm, which is quite common for humans, but benign. So not the worst thing ever. And moving on to talk about our friendly neighborhood bees. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you are aware of this. Well, of course, I hope you're aware of this because it's a pretty serious thing. Hive colony collapse disorder thingy that's just been annihilating bees everywhere is a pretty serious threat. It's kind of threatening the entire honeybee species. And we're still trying to figure out exactly what's causing it and how to prevent it, but researchers from Washington State University have decided to come up with the best plan. They're gonna make a sperm bank for bees. The plan is to make stronger bees, basically, that could survive pretty much anything that can happen to a bee that could kill it. And to do this, they would be combining European and North American stocks together to create more diversity, because that's a really important thing. The honeybee gene pool here in North America has actually been pretty much stagnant. Uh, there's really nothing going on since about 1920s. Terrible. So what they're planning to do is introduce three unique species of bee from Europe and bring them into North America so we can actually have some adaptation for climate. And again, hopefully get something that actually work, uh, specifically an Italian type of honeybee, which will then work better in hotter climates. Imagine that. And finally, that new method of cloaking data, well, it's, it's, it's so effective, it's, it's like it never even happened. It's a possible new way of sending secrets and nobody would ever be able to read it. This new method is actually based on a theory from way back in 1836 by Henry Fox Talbot. Basically, it involves manipulating light as a wave, because if you know your elementary physics, uh, light is both a particle and a wave. Manipulate the wave, make, you know, the dips and everything, and then you create a hole in the dip, and then you put the data in the hole, and then you cover it all up. So like it never happened. Because it didn't because it's just the way. But it does help us with improved data readability and it negates corruption, which leads to better encryption. So guys, what we'd really love to know from you is, do you think one day we could actually, you know, make an actual cloaking device of our own? Or do you think we should just steal it from the Klingons? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you liked what you see today, don't forget to click those like and subscribe buttons. And we will see you tomorrow. We are firstly going to talk about a skeleton, an itty bitty skeleton, that was recovered 10 years ago, has recently been identified as one of our ancestors. Also on the show, scientists again confirm something we already know. And lastly, the Curiosity Rover goes on a road trip. On today's episode, we take a look at a very interesting lake off the coast of Australia. And we see how a meteor stimulated life on Earth. And to finish things off, why you should be using sunscreen every day. Duh.